I'm sure you're all familiar with Venmo and PayPal, but have you ever heard of Zelle? Zelle was only launched in June of 2017, but they've been putting PayPal to shame. In fact, they've nearly grown to half of PayPal size within just these five years. Currently, PayPal handles just over $300 billion worth of payments every quarter. Meanwhile, Zelle has already reached over $150 billion per quarter. Something else to note is that the average Zelle transaction is worth a lot more than the average PayPal transaction. Last year, PayPal completed a total of 19.3 billion transactions, which translated to $1.25 trillion. This means that each transaction was worth $65 on average. Meanwhile, Zelle has completed over 5 billion transactions within the past 5 years, which translates to nearly $1.5 trillion. This means that each transaction was worth nearly $300 on average. So, not only has Zelle been exploding in popularity, but it appears to be the app of choice for larger payments. At this rate, it seems like Zelle overtaking PayPal is inevitable. But how is a new player able to put an established giant to shame? One of the main reasons for the popularity of Zelle is the players behind it. Zelle isn't just some startup like Stripe or Firm, it's actually the brainchild of the largest financial institutions in the world. This includes Bank of America, Capital One, JP Morgan Chase, PNC Bank, Truist, US Bank, and Wells Fargo. With such large names behind it, you might be thinking that the success of Zelle is a no-brainer, but that's actually not the case. In fact, Zelle was not their first attempt at taking on PayPal. Their first attempt was actually a service called Clear Exchange, which came out in April of 2011. The project was initially launched by Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo, and it was based on the same ideology as Zelle, eliminating the friction and cost associated with making payments. Instead of having to use account numbers and routing numbers, you could just use someone's email address or phone number. But despite the promising pitch, Clear Exchange did not translate all that well in the real world. One of the key characteristics that makes PayPal and Venmo so popular is that they've become verbs. It's common for people to say, I can PayPal you or I can Venmo you. But ain't no one gonna be saying, I can clear exchange you. And given that much of these transactions take place amongst younger individuals in social settings, public perception is critical. Aside from having terrible branding, clear exchange was also rather clunky and slow. It was painfully evident that Clear Exchange was not designed by a modern organization. To initiate transfers, you had to navigate to portals on these banks' websites and apps. And if you used any of these portals 10 years ago, you know how bad the UI was. It wasn't just the UI that was clunky either. The payments themselves were just as clunky as it took up to 5 business days for transactions to be completed. Do you know what else takes up to 5 business days to complete? traditional ACH transfers. It appeared that these banks had just thrown together a platform that could initiate ACH transfers using just someone's email address or phone number. But nothing else about the service stuck out. Something else that we should note is that Clear Exchange offered no real benefit to most users. One of their largest selling features was that there were no fees to send money. But the problem is that PayPal nor Venmo charge any fees to send money to friends or family either. So really, there was no reason to use Clear Exchange. From the average person's perspective, Venmo was already popular amongst their friend groups. Transfers took less than 5 days to complete. The UI was magnitudes better, and as far as they were concerned, it was free. So there was really no incentive to make the jump to Clear Exchange. At first, the banks thought that the reason for this failure was a lack of participating members. So they worked on growing the size of their network. But eventually, they realized that what Clear Exchange needed wasn't more fundamental features. What it needed was a facelift, and that brings us to the introduction of Zelle. The first problem that Zelle addressed was the branding shortfall. They changed the name from Clear Exchange to Zelle. Zelle was not only easier to pronounce than Venmo and PayPal, but it was unique and memorable as it started with a Z. The old branding wasn't the only thing that the banks left behind either. They also more or less ditched their institutional business. 
Remember how we discussed that clear exchange was free? Well, it wasn't just cost effective for individual users, it was also cost effective for institutional users unlike PayPal and Venmo. So the banks were very much hoping that businesses and governments would start using the service and that this would prompt consumers to use it as well. But this is rarely how things work out. It's almost always the other way around. Institutions usually shift to what their consumers want. This is precisely why businesses like PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard are so successful. Consumers want to use them, and businesses have to pay the price. ClearExchange was looking to eliminate the price for businesses, but that doesn't make the service any more popular amongst consumers. The banks eventually realized this with Zelle, and they pretty much ditched the services market altogether. Instead, Zelle is only intended for paying people that you already know and trust. In fact, Zelle disclaims any responsibility for goods and services that are bought through their system. While this might sound like a disadvantage, this is what actually allows for Zelle's biggest selling feature. By keeping the checking and verifications to a minimum, Zelle was able to allow for instant transfers. This feature was actually launched under ClearExchange, but Zelle is what became known for it. This was really Zelle's checkmate move because this was something that PayPal simply couldn't compete with, at least not very easily. PayPal would essentially have to become a bank if they wanted to allow for instant transfers. PayPal has very much moved in this direction, but they still haven't been able to eliminate instant transfer fees altogether. Currently, they charge 1.75% for instant transfers. Something else that makes Zelle especially appealing is that you don't really have to create an account to use it. Virtually everyone in the US already has a bank account with a Zelle participant. So all you have to do is enable the Zelle feature within your bank account. This also means that payments go directly to your bank account. So you don't have to deal with nominal sums of money just laying around in your PayPal account. To be honest, none of these are groundbreaking changes from ClearExchange. But the facts don't lie, as Zelle is magnitudes more successful than ClearExchange. It just goes to show that how you're offering a service is just as important if not more important than what you're offering itself. The banks didn't realize this a decade ago, but with Zelle, they're more aware than ever, which has given PayPal and Venmo a run for their money. Hearing all this, Zelle may sound like the perfect option for money transfers, but like always, there's another side to the story as well. For one, Zelle does not offer any sort of consumer or seller protection, which makes it virtually useless for small businesses and merchants. Now, we shouldn't note that PayPal services within this realm aren't that great either. In fact, it's actually terrible, and it seems like PayPal almost always sides with the scammer regardless of whether the scammer is a customer or a merchant. And this is why PayPal has a Trustpilot review of just 1.3. But with that being said, at least with PayPal, there is a system. With Zelle, the system is non-existent. This is likely something that Zelle is working on in the background. But as of right now, if you want some sort of transaction protection, you're gonna have to go with PayPal. Not only will you not have transaction protection with Zelle, here's the thing, Zelle offers instant transfers directly into anyone's bank account. That's like a scammer's dream right there. And let's just say, scammers have been hard at work trying to exploit Zelle. Their latest scam tactic is known as the pay yourself scam. The scam starts with a text message that alerts you that your bank account may be at risk. If you respond to this message, the scammer will pretend to be a bank representative and will ask for a one-time verification passcode to secure your account. What they're actually doing though is enrolling their bank account through Zelle using your phone number and email. This means that the next time someone sends you money through Zelle, it goes directly to the scammer's bank account. And with the average Zelle transaction clocking in at nearly $300, this becomes quite an issue. The banks are looking to stand behind Zelle and have been refunding these transactions. But this has been quite expensive, $255 million expensive to be exact. Now, you could argue that this amount is nothing in comparison to banks' net income, and that is true. But here's the thing, Zelle doesn't produce any revenue whatsoever, and there's no clear path to generate revenue moving forward either, so it's kind of hard to justify these expenses. I mean, they're basically spending all this money just to protect their market share. 
even that argument is a bit iffy given that it's not like people are opening Wells Fargo accounts just to use Zelle. Really, the only thing that Zelle is accomplishing for these big banks is preventing PayPal from gaining too much power against them. For larger banks like Chase and Wells Fargo, that's probably a worthwhile investment, but the same cannot be said about smaller banks. It appears that these institutions will be kicked out of the system if they don't agree to reimburse victims, so it looks like they'll have no choice but to participate. All of this probably sounds like a good thing for consumers, but is it? While Zelle is truly an exceptional service, all of this brings us back to ground zero. One of the biggest appeals of using alternative financial institutions is that it takes power away from the big banks. But embracing Zelle does the exact opposite. Not only will the big banks have control over our savings and loans, but they'll also have control over our transactions. And at this point, nothing short of a black swan event could stifle the growth of Zelle. If the banks launch some sort of transaction protection further down the line, this will simply make Zelle even more appealing. Something else to note is that Zelle has a much better shot internationally than PayPal ever did thanks to the members behind it. UBS, for example, would likely have a much harder time turning down Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and basically the rest of the US banking system than just turning down PayPal. In the end, Zelle's popularity is really not surprising. The big banks are basically just flexing their financial power by offering a phenomenal service for free. While they did have some struggles in the early days, they've more than figured those out, and now they're looking to overtake PayPal. But even that is just the first step. It appears that the real goal of Zelle is to eventually challenge Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. For decades, banks have been reliant on these payment processors to complete merchant transactions, but Zelle could change all of that. And looking at Jamie Dimon's Pay by Bank vision, it looks like this is very much where the industry is heading, but that's just what I think. Are you a fan of Zelle? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you wish that we could enjoy the benefits of Zelle without giving banks even more power. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.